Hello, everybody. Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. We are in Cobra Convergence 7. We've got more Cobra Convergence 7. And today we are talking to Talking Joe. We are talking to Talking Joe. Uh, we have Mark and Tim here. So, uh, Mark and Tim, uh, please introduce yourselves. Tell everybody who you are, what you do, and where to find you. Hey, so I am Mark. Um, and uh, I guess I'm the I'm the half <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> the like i'm the guy i'm the guy who uh who comes up with a lot of uh the driving direction for for talking joe lining uh up things uh tim joins me and uh adds brain and thoughts to the conversations that would otherwise be brainless and thoughtless um so uh <laughs> so i've been doing this for uh, a few years we uh, uh it was originally talking joe was originally started by a guy called chief with his buddy ben and uh their mission really was at the time was to start with uh a, a gi joe real american hero issue one for, uh, from 1982 read that record what they thought about it afterwards and uh you know try and get all the way through to the end of uh, 155 and uh, they accomplished and kept on going and along the way uh chief broke and replaced a number of his co-presenters <laughs> and somewhere along the way i was uh, the replacement and when chief ran out of batteries i just uh picked up the baton and kept on going so so we've been reading issue by issue through all of the idw hammer run all the way through to issue uh, 300 in tandem we've started on uh the devil's due era and uh we're sort of just made our way up to the beginning of the joe casey run at the moment and uh, along the way dipping into all sorts of other things besides we've spoken to larry hammer and Jim Shooter and Ron Rudat and all manner of artists and creators uh, along the way. So we typically will drop a weekly episode and uh, and you can find out all of the details over at talkingjoe.co.uk, which is the website which has links to YouTubes, podcasts, uh, social media, all of that stuff. Tim, I think I've used up all of the things that you would have had to say. <laughs> Mark is the uh, is the creative. Mark is the producer, creative director, and editor of Talking Joe. And uh, Mark knows and loves GI Joe comics very well. And I show up and talk, but I have uh, made comics, taught comics. I own a brick and mortar comic book store, so I sell comics and uh so we we are interested in um analyzing is such a strong word but um examining uh the ups and downs of art and color and story and storytelling and lettering and uh along the way mark has lined up some wonderful guests most of whom are directly re related to the issues that we are reading and in the case of someone like Jim Shooter or Rod Wiggum or Ron Rudat, uh, someone who historically is important to G.I. Joe. And since we just got through the 40th anniversary, it made sense to line up a bunch of those guests. That is awesome. And, and I, I think it's fantastic that you're looking at the, the legacy of G.I. Joe and the people who helped create it. Uh, so, Mark, it sounds like you kind of inherited uh talking joe and uh tim it sounds like you have a significant amount of comic book knowledge so that's a that's a, a great foundation that's a fantastic foundation uh how long have you the two of you been working um this show together how long have you been doing that together um i think it started just before just in the before times right tim so it was um i think it was like towards the beginning of 2020 i want to say just uh did we start just before lockdown and then <laughs> I, have, I, have my, I have my planner right here uh i i think uh hooded cobra commander what happened was mark mark did an interview with me where mark was the only host because uh for many years i have been researching and writing a history book on gi joe so before talking joe my presence in 
uh, at GI Joe conventions or online was linked to a real American book, which is the title of my book and also my website, if you add a .com at the end. And so uh, I was a guest on the show mm -hmm. and I talked for so long. <laughs> <laughs> Mark broke it into uh, two episodes um so did we was yeah. that interview december i feel like that was december 2020 uh, okay i'm probably then, getting my my years mixed up then so uh because i i think we've been doing this for two and a half years um and then uh very soon after um uh because mark you had just reviewed issue 275 and done the big yeah. uh, robert atkins interview uh so very soon That's after right. uh mark said Hey, you like That's to talk about GI Joe? Uh, would you like to talk about GI Joe every week, or sometimes five out, five out of six weeks? Uh, and this was now, um, this was now. Everyone was stuck at home now, and I thought that might be good for me. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Real American Book is a fantastic resource. I hope everyone will check that out. Uh, I will make sure that there are links in the description of this video. Please check out those links. Uh, fantastic resources and a great show. So thank you guys for all the work you do. Uh, you, you've done a tremendous amount of work, and it's a great asset to the community. So thank you for that. Thank you very much. Um, let's talk about, let's, let's go back to the early days. Um, so, uh, I think it's fair to say both of you are GI Joe fans. Uh, how did you first get into GI Joe? Like way back when, what was your first experience with it? Like I go first, Tim. Okay. So, uh, of, you might've detected that I'm a Brit. So, um, my, my first encounter was with, uh, action force. So uh, that was being published uh, in the pages of a comic called Battle Action Force, uh, which was initially, uh, you know, all, focusing on all of the, the Palatoy toys, so the Red Shadows and Zed Force and all of those guys. And um, so you'd see that in like in the news, news agents, it was being released weekly. And um, yeah, I was bought that uh, by my dad a couple of times and was like, whoa, this is the stuff. Then I saw some of the toys in the in the shops and like, yeah, mind blown. These are amazing. And so, yeah, that combination of comic and toy together uh, sort of, you know, really cemented it. So I, uh, yeah, followed Battle Action Force until its demise. It was terribly, ter and, and demise of, you know, Palatoy Action Force and was terribly, terribly disappointed and sad. And, you know, that lovely thing that I love so much is gone. And then uh, randomly sort of just, you know, without sort of knowing that it was coming, just sort of um, happened upon sort of the newly relaunched version of Action, Action Force uh, under Hasbro and Marvel UK. Um, and so, yeah, kept on going from, from there, really. So, yeah, collected all of the weekly Action Force Marvel UK issues, which I think there was like 50 issues, I want to say. Uh, which which you know had these original stories but also uh the the larry hammer reprints uh, and sort of over time as well sort of got to track down all of all of that material uh, and uh, fill in all, all of the holes in that that collection sort of sporadically <laughs> and uh and yeah it kept on going really didn't didn't stop too much apart from the dark times when uh, i had kids and thought yeah let's just sell all of those toys because I'm an adult now. I'm not going to ever play with those again. Um, <laughs> so that was the that was the only blip. But uh, but generally, GI Joe has been a big part of my life for most of my life. Um, my brother asked for the Sky Striker, and my parents said no. We had a lot of Lego and Matchbox and Hot Wheels, and he said, "No, no, no. It's not. I'm not going to get into a new toy. It's just because it's a jet. Because my brother was big into planes and so was my dad uh and uh i don't remember catching the first miniseries on tv uh but i remember catching the second mini miniseries on tv and uh my first figure was blowtorch so i got in in 84 and uh my brother and i 
got really big into the toys. We we had we had Transformers, we had Playmobil, we had Lego, we had these other things. Um, but GI Joe was the best, and it was supported by this amazing show, which had uh, superior artwork and superior writing, and it was on five days a week. And um, uh, and then in '89, uh, I was at a bookstore at the mall, and I saw issue. 90 uh on a spinner rack and um the show was over the show was in reruns right i didn't know that deke episodes were coming and um i had this need for more gi joe stories and uh on the cover was road pig and road pig had never been on the show and i looked through the first that issue and i saw all sorts of things that i would not see in the show and specifically characters who had not made it to the show and it was only a dollar, which was uh, one third the price of a figure. And I said to my brother, look, and he'd actually read a few issues at his friend's house. And he had, he and I had sort of bought an issue or two before that, but it sort of didn't know what it was. And he said, a dollar, don't buy that. <laughs> and he was doing the math. What he was actually saying is, right, that's one third of another figure. So save that dollar. And a uh, dollar wasn't actually that much. And um, I read that comic so many times. And in it was an ad for a mail order company, East Coast Comics in New Jersey. And they had many cheap back issues. And so uh, that, was, that was the beginning. Um, and that got me into all comics. Uh, I, I think this sort of line is, is pretty uh, standard where a kid in the 80s starts reading the Marvel comic, um, either because they've seen the TV ads or because it's somehow in front of them and then they sort of remember the TV ads. Oh, I've been told to buy this for the last five years. And um, and then we got into sort of what's the book that's most like it, right? The Punisher or The Nom. And then, you know, X-Men and Wolverine because someone at school kept talking about Wolverine and then Ninja Turtles because that's in the air. And then uh, that summer, is the, uh, the Tim Burton Batman movie, right? And so, so the world of comics opens from G.I. Joe. Yeah, I, I think uh, you're exactly right. Um, a lot of people got their introduction to comics in general through G.I. Joe. And a couple of people that we've talked about, that I've talked to in these interviews have said the same thing. Um, that that G.I. Joe comic book series, I think may have inspired a lot more you know, comic book artist and writer careers and other uh, involvement in comic books in general than, than maybe, you know, uh, acknowledged that, that a lot of people started right there. Um, and Mark, I'm glad you mentioned Action Force because um, I'm enjoying seeing a lot of uh, people outside of the UK now discovering Action Force and uh, really loving it, um, mm -hmm. especially like the, the, the toys a lot of which were just a little different from what we got, uh, at, you know, in North America, but different in some really fascinating ways. So I'm really delighted that people are uh, discovering that now. And it's mm -hmm. like a whole new world that is opened up. Um, so, Mark, you, you said that um, you didn't take too much of a break uh, before kind of returning uh, to G.I. Joe. Um was there anything that kind of inspired you to come back in and pick it back up again? Um, yeah, so so I've not never taken a break from the comics. I've taken more of a break from, I guess, the community and from uh, collecting, you know, everything <laughs> with the toys and stuff. So. Uh, so yeah, the, there's I guess a few triggers I guess. So um, uh, probably the biggest one was talking Joe because I'd been buying the comics, but being uh, sort of allowing them to sort of stack up and just not read them because you know the the first uh, the first few issues from from Hammer on uh, one five five and beyond. Well, not just Hammer, but the the first few issues let's say didn't necessarily sort of inspire me too much. They, I, it wasn't the best start to, to the run i think it's, it's fair to say and um and so that sort of slightly soured me on that that relaunch and so uh i i kind of yeah out of loyalty and out of you know um 
knowing that I love this stuff, I continued to buy it, but just wasn't inspired enough to, to read it. So um, the the real yeah the real thing that that did it for me was um, Chief, um, who was a good friend of mine, um, starting up the podcast and uh, and getting me to sort of you know read it read it along with the episodes as he was doing it. So um, you know uh, from sort of before episode one, we were kind of talking about the the podcast and how you know how it'd work and what it'd do and. Um, and and so yeah that that sort of uh gave the inspiration of you know not just hearing him him do the talking joe podcast but also discussing it with him directly as a as a friend so that got me kind of actively back into the swing of you know regularly reading the the comics and sort of interacting with the community and and things like that um and then probably the the other sort of dimension to it is probably just like the launch of classified and having kids at the right age so I've got uh, an 11 year old now uh, who who is really into uh, G.I. Joe and uh, well, the G.I. Joe toys more, more uh, and and specifically the classified la- line. So so he's sort of uh, loving that and sort of getting, you know, buying that for, for him as a toy for him to actually enjoy and play with as a toy um, is <laughs> a wild idea. Uh, is you know it's just a lovely thing to to see and sort of my you know passion for for the kind of the gi joe as a you know as a holistic thing being able to sort of enjoy that as some you know as as a thing with with him is sort of um brings a whole different dimension to it so that's been uh, a lovely thing all right tim uh did you ever take a, a break from it uh and if so uh, <laughs> what brought you back uh, I only took a break when when GI Joe took a break from all of us. It did. It's not um, strictly true, Tim. <laughs> Devil's Jew. Uh, uh, I mean, extreme. Well, I was buying all the extreme toys, and I watched season one when it aired. And I got I got season two. Uh, I I interned at Sunbow Productions, which by then was called Sunbow Entertainment when I was in college, and uh, I dubbed all of season two of Extreme for myself. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, in, uh, Mark in, uh, 97, 98, there were those Toys R Us exclusive, um, real American hero figures, but there was, there was no GI Joe content otherwise, uh, in the 98 and 99, but you know, then the toy sort of came back properly and then, uh, Devil's Do launched. Um, I, I remember, uh, reading the announcement sitting at my laptop in college and I, I saw the announcement uh, somehow, uh, maybe it wasn't online, maybe I was just holding uh, an issue of the paper Transformers fan club newsletter with the announcement um, that Bench Press Comics was going to make new G.I. Joe and new Transformers. And I was really excited. Um, no, my break is more that um, in high school and college um, uh, in in high school, I transitioned from being a G.I. Joe toy buyer and player to being a G.I. Joe toy collector. And there were, uh, it's like eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, where I was I was buying and playing with some toys, but also buying some toys and keeping them um, mint sealed and then buying a few older ones. And the prices back then were so reasonable. Um, and uh, a few years after college, I sort of stopped buying the toys because I had run out of space and I was also buying Transformers. I'm a big Transformers fan, uh, not enough to do a weekly podcast. But um, in some of those linear years, uh, like in 2000, 2001, 2002, uh, I was on a Transformers discussion board every day when I was at work, should have been working. Because, <laughs> um, you know, Beast Wars and Beast Machines and also the annual convention BotCon and then a couple years where there was a second convention, OTTFCC, the official Transformers Collectors Convention. And uh, my friend and I were making this hilarious Transformers fan fiction comic book called Trans Spoof. And um, um, but whenever G.I. Joe comics were going to come back, I was ready. And when the there was that issue of Wizard Magazine with uh, those pinups for like potential 80s books and then Devil's Do showed up and 
the cover to issue one from Devil Stew is so great. And I, Talking Joe listeners will know, uh, did not like the first arc, didn't like the first issue, didn't like the first arc. And I bailed on that series around issue 10. So um, actually, I guess I guess this is a long way of answering your question. Um, uh, but I was buying some of those toys then because there were those cool three packs with the figures uh, and then later some two packs, uh, uh, three packs with comics and then later two packs with comics with the 25th anniversary bodies. So, um, but the thing I, the thing I really <laughs> I want the, I want the cartoon to come back. Yeah. Uh, and there's, there's no way that, you know, I mean, the, the eighties, nineties comic gets continued. Uh, there's no way that the eighties cartoon gets continued. Um, you know, Disney plus is sort of making a sequel to the 1992 Fox X-Men cartoon and it's called X-Men 97. Um, and that's, you know, that's not going to happen with GI Joe and, um, you know, renegades isn't going to come back. Um, and so, um, I am, uh, I'm not a toy buyer these days. Cause I, uh, also switched in the last 15 years from buying cool things where there are many, many of them like 10,000 or a hundred thousand units to original art or artifacts from, uh, animation cells or, you know, original artwork from Hasbro, uh, partly because I wanted it and partly because then it can go in my book. Awesome. Yeah, that, uh, that's, and again, it's a great resource. Uh, please check out the, the website. The link will be in the description. Anybody who hasn't seen it yet really should. Uh, and Tim, you talked about, um, uh, being into transformers and kind of being in that community uh mark uh is there anything outside of gi joe that uh, inspires you anything beyond our joe verse that you are also interested in yeah so um i'd say sort of like generally the the world of comics um is is sort of my sort of a parallel passion to, to gi joe so uh i'm sitting in front of my library and these aren't just G.I. Joe comics there. You've got some uh, some other non-G.I. Uh, Joe things uh, in, in there. So um, I think part of what I bring to Talking Joe when I'm reading the, you know, the Talking Joe comics and discussing them with, with Tim is a kind of broader you know, awareness and knowledge of comics outside of G.I. Joe. And, and what we try and do is sort of look at them sort of slightly objectively and, and rather than saying, this comic's cool because it's got my favorite G.I. Joe character in it. We'll kind of, you know, dissect a little bit, you know, what makes it a good or less than good uh, comic and, and try and um, try and sort of, you know, make things a little bit objective uh, about, you know, bring the subjective to the objective. So rather than say we don't, uh, we don't like something, we'll try and explain maybe what is it about the story or what is it about the art that, that particularly connects or sort of disconnects um, uh, with us. And um, what's uh, one of the joys has been coming back to the Devil's Due uh, comics and doing a read read through of of those and coming to uh, you know for me the you know one of the joys have been that I you know read them twenty years ago and passage of time has meant that it's entirely blurred in my memory and I can I can't remember any of the specifics. So it's fun to kind of rediscover the uh the comics and for tim someone who was originally um you know not a fan and let me if i do my best tim finn impression and be like these aren't written by larry hammer i don't like them Wah! um so 20 years later coming back to them from a slightly different place and uh, and reading them with a slightly different eye of that you know at the time it's like these are the only gi joe comics that are coming out take it or leave it if you don't like them tough because you're not getting any other gi joe comics now they've been out for 20 years and it's it's like there's plenty of choice and what you can be spending your time and energies focusing on so so it's uh that passage of time i think uh it sort of softened things and allowed tim to, to come up with a place of, of coming at them slightly ob objectively and and uh getting as yeah getting some some level of uh enjoyment out of the process of looking at uh, together even even when 
maybe the, the the substance of the comic itself isn't always necessarily to to exact taste. Tim, Tim, I'm talking for you. So if you can, no, that's <laughs> put in uh, your own words. So um, uh, I, I think of myself as a historian and I've done a lot of interviews for my book and um, and I. I read history, I read history books on comics and animation. I don't read novels. I don't, uh, I watch, I watch some streaming shows that everyone watches. I watch the star Wars shows. I watch the Marvel shows. Um, but, um, uh, because I have for many years wanted my students to see a continuum in the history of animation in America and in the world, um, I taught a comics class for many years and it was not a history of comics class, but for a week or two, I would do a lecture and there are, there are threads and there are connections. And, um, I don't mean something like, you know, snake eyes origin is in 26 and 27, but then you also have to read 144. that's at the surface level. Um, so what I'm interested in and what Mark is also interested in and game for are, um, uh, sort of threads and context. So for example, um, as we're reading an issue, um, either Mark has found interviews with the person who drew that issue or the person who wrote that issue and sends me the link and says, oh, we can talk about this also because this answers some questions we have. Why didn't this person draw the whole issue or what have you? But also what is happening elsewhere at Marvel or at Devil's Due in the 80s and 90s or uh, in the 2000s, what's happening in the comics market, uh, what is happening in larger pop culture, what's happening in, to some extent, geopolitical, uh, the geopolitical arena, right? You know, if you were reading the Battle of Benjin in uh, Marvel uh, issues uh, 112 to 117, um, you would, of course, say to yourself, oh, this is Larry Hama's analog for the actual Gulf War. Uh, it's not Iraq and Kuwait and also Cobra's involved. And so you can do a little or a lot of that with G.I. Joe comics. And it might be something like, uh, oh, well, what was the best-selling comic that month or that year? Oh, it's this Batman event. It's this X-Men event. It's this Spider-Man event. How might that affect Devil's Do? Or now, how might that be affecting uh, IDW in the last 12 years? So in addition to um, the nuts and bolts of, you know, I like what this character is doing, or I don't like what this character is doing, it's why might the writer may be making this decision um, beyond a creative decision? Why might the publisher be making this decision uh, beyond sort of we've got 22 or 20 pages to fill? Uh, and some of that we can get from people who were there and some of that we can get um, from reading around it and reading up on it. And some of it we can get just from sort of looking really carefully on the page and, and putting our heads together. And I think there are, one of the reasons why I'm so pleased to have joined Talking Joe is that there are a lot of places online in text and in video or or in audio where someone will talk about a G.I. Joe toy. And uh, I and I think I was waiting for someone to talk about G.I. Joe comics the way that I wanted to talk about G.I. Joe comics. And it turns out Mark and I can talk about <laughs> Hell G.I. Joe comics. I can talk about comics the way I want to talk about comics. <laughs> I mean, that's that's, wh that's why I'm writing my book, right? I, I thought 23 years ago, why isn't someone writing this, this coffee table history art book of Real American Hero? Oh. <laughs> Well, well, thank you. Thank you for got you guys for what you're doing. Um, we are about at time, but uh, before we wrap up, what I would like to do um, is um, just kind of turn the, the floor over to you guys for any final words to our audience and remind everybody uh, that Talking Joe is in Cobra Convergence 7. Again, there will be links in the description of this video. Uh, at the time you see this, their presentation should be out now, so go right away and check that out. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already and check out the rest of their catalog. They've got a very deep and rich catalog of uh, material and content that you will definitely want to check out. Uh, but to wrap it up, guys, I will turn the floor over to you for any final comments to our audience. Yeah, I mean, just to echo what, what you said, really, I mean, uh, your, uh, your theme this year sort of gave a good springboard for something that I wanted to talk about 
uh, any anyway. So uh, yeah, tune in to today's episode to find out what we think, because I don't know what we think yet, because we haven't recorded it yet. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> it's the mysteries of time. Um, uh, but so that's been a, a great uh, a great prompt to to do to look at something that that we were meaning to and and hadn't got to uh, yet. So that um, that will be uh, a lot of fun to 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 do as an experience for just me and Tim and hopefully uh, for the um, yeah a sort of a, a a rare little golden nugget that maybe uh, sort of G, uh, GI Joe comics fans aren't uh, familiar with. Uh, but but beyond that, yeah, we sort of put out a weekly podcast most most weeks. Um, we started at issue one. We've worked our way through to issue three hundred. So, um, you know, you can join in the experience, uh, read along, uh, to go all the way back and start at the beginning, um, or um, just delve into to some of those more recent ones. Where, pretty much for the last uh, run of IDW, um, month by month, as those issues were coming out, we would be talking to the creators involved because. Uh, when they moved into those kind of untold tales type arcs um it was a a, a new uh artist each week uh, each month so it meant that we could uh we could be very regularly talking to uh to the creative team and, and meant that um uh, we we talked to an awful lot of people about gi joe uh, how much gi joe meant to them or not um and their sort of creative process for sort of putting all of those issues uh together you can also yeah delve into the devil's due eras with a with a read along on on that and yeah explore the back catalog to to you know hear from various luminaries uh, such as one of my favorite uh, artists uh, Rod Wiggum that we had the great privilege of speaking to not so long ago so uh, that in a nutshell is is it like and subscribe he says I have, uh, I've I've talked for a long time. I have nothing to add. That Mark, that was great. All and, right, and awesome. thank you, and thank you, Hooded Cobra Commander. Oh, and, and uh, also best best jingles in the business. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, thank you guys. I really am grateful that you're uh, involved this year. Thank you again. Thank you for all you do. Uh, thank you for being such a great asset uh, to the community and providing so much information uh, that is useful. So, uh, so thank you. My, my sincere thanks to you. Uh, and I guess that's it for now. Thank you guys. Once again, everyone, uh, links are in the description. Go right now, check out what they're doing um, and make sure you subscribe and check out uh, everything they have done over the last few years. Uh, you will not be disappointed. There's a, a lot to see there. So uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. And we'll see everybody soon. Thank you so much. And thanks for all you do as well at bringing us uh, across the community together. Thank you, Hooded Cobra Commander. <laughs> Thank you, guys. <laughs>